if you would say persimmons to somebody in the northern part of this state or the northern part of Michigan or a, a lot of states, they'd say, what's a persimmon? Yeah, because they have no idea. In Mitchell, they take their persimmons very seriously. Next to the name of the city on the water tower, you'll see a picture of a persimmon. Ever wonder how this small city in southern Indiana got associated with this puckery little fruit? It's a passionate relationship that goes back over 60 years. You'd be hard pressed to find anybody in Mitchell who doesn't like persimmon pudding, and you won't find anyone who doesn't love the Persimmon Festival. The Persimmon Festival has been held in Mitchell since 1947, making it one of the oldest annual community festivals in the state of Indiana. The Persimmon Festival is an annual homecoming celebration of our small town here. It takes in all aspects of the community, and we're the right size community that we can all come together and be part of it, and it celebrates our history and looks to our future constantly. It is such a great community event. Everybody loves it. They gather around it. They put in so much time, so much effort, just to make sure that it's a complete success. This is done completely as a volunteer thing. It's been going on for 62 years. There are other communities around that have tried to get festivals started and they've had to pay directors and they've had to pay people to do this, that, and the other. This is all done by people who love the festival and want to see it go on year after year. It is a lot of work. It's not just September thing. These people on these committees and all the things, they start right after the, this one's over. They start working on the next one. And it is a lot of work, but it is a rewarding work, I think. They are so proud of this little festival, and they make sure that it's a, a success every year. And that's also the fun part of it, you know, seeing people of all ages involved in this festival, you know, men, women, and just working so hard that one week to total exhaustion, you know, th that's the cool part about the Pursuit Festival. Seems like everybody pitches together to do this and to entertain people and to get a nice parade together and, and provide food and, and rides for the kids and they have a little bit of everything for everybody. I, I think that it just makes our community more hospitable to the rest of the surrounding area. You also uh, get to see how proud the, the residents of Mitchell are throughout the town, not only bringing their families and letting uh, them enjoy what they knew as kids. They're letting their children uh, see what Mitchell is all about. Even though we're a small town, we're a loving town, we're a caring town, and we appreciate one, each other. You know, everybody comes back. It's, it's a great deal for the people in the community. And, uh, once you've been involved with it and, and you've lived with it, well, you just become part of it. It's, it's something you do. You go to the festival. The festival is like Christmas. It's, it's like every holiday wrapped up at the same time because they have their friends and there's rides and everything is right at their front door and it's, it's magic. Most of the time, me and some of my best friends walk around and ride rides and pretty much until it gets really dark and then <laughs> Until our parents make us go home. Then the next night, same thing. It brings kids out from all ages. I mean, you'll see from barely walking to needing a walker, and, and they'll actually be on the rides. They just love it. They just come out. This is a community event, and that's what it's all meant to be. I've come to the Persimmon Festival since I was a kid. My grandparents brought me, and I've always liked the Persimmon Festival. In fact, I still ride all the rides. I think a lot of the adults get to be kids again, in a way, because they all enjoy the parade, they all enjoy the persimmon pudding, and it's, it's, you know, it's home. It brings them back, you know, 20, 30 years when they were a kid doing this, and you'd never outgrow it, and it's really nice. The history of the festival has, has mirrored the, the history of, yeah, of Mitchell. You know, we had days honoring carpenters, we had days honoring Lehigh, we had day honoring Doc Hamilton, who was a longtime physician here in town. Uh, we had days honoring, you know, Gus Grissom. Uh, whatever the historical time period was in Mitchell, that was what we tried to capture and still do to a certain amount of time now. So. George Bishop, he was the one that originated the Persimmon Festival because he felt like the community needed a, some kind of a festival to bring us all together. George Neal Bishop was a longtime educator in Mitchell. 
As a teacher, principal, and superintendent, Bishop selflessly inspired everyone in the community to strive for a better and brighter purpose in life. The Persimmon Festival is his lasting legacy. He came to the Chamber of Commerce in the summer of 1947, proposed, proposed that to them because they, he would have to have their cooperation to use the city streets, etc. And uh, that's how it started. Uh, I'm sure I'm quite uh, safe in saying that the festival as we know it today is uh, not at all like George thought it would be. Uh, his uh, original idea was that this would be nothing more than a homecoming uh, for people that had left this area and would come back to visit, renew old acquaintances, and make new friends. Uh, in 1959, uh, the festival changed considerably with the coming of uh, Gus Grissom uh, upon the scene as a national hero being picked as one of the original seven astronauts. And with his coming home during that period, uh, we began to attract quite a, a lot of national attention. And at that period, our festival changed to uh, different flavors, so to speak. We were no longer just a homecoming. Uh, and we became a festival that there were people uh, all around the country uh, came to attend. The early festivals were in October. Uh, they were the boys first between the 5th and the 10th of October, because that's really more when the persimmons get right. The persimmon was decided on because that just happened to be when it came into season, and they were just—they didn't—they didn't have any big affinity with the persimmon. It was just that—that that was the, what was decided at the time, and then it's been that way ever since, the way I understand it. The only thing I can put together, where the persimmon came in, there always was a persimmon tree on the library lawn. There's not too many places that have persimmons like they do around here, so that's the main reason they have it, because there's many, many trees. The Indiana Nut Growers Association came here to Mitchell the first few years of the Persimmon Festival, and they would have a contest. And people from the different uh, parts of the county would bring in their best persimmons after they judged them at this Indiana Nut Growers Association. They took them and they went and took graphs off from them. And there was a man by the name of John Talbot. He lived in Linton, Indiana. He took the graphs and he started the trees. That's how the Morris Burton and the Michelina and the John Rick were started, those three different ones that I can remember. I'm sure there's more. And that's where a lot of trees around Mitchell came from. Some festival. When I was a kid, is a lot like it is today. It had stage entertainment, it had a queen, it had a parade, it had uh, uh, carnivals. You know, they always had the pudding contest. They always had a lot of community involvement. Back then, it was a four-day event. It started on Wednesday and went through Saturday. People today ask us why we crown our queen on Wednesday night. We do because back then, that was the first night of the festival. I remember it just being, that was the best week of the year because you got to come to town and ride the rides and do all the things that people still get to do. The idyllic pioneer village at Spring Mill State Park is the setting for the opening event of the Persimmon Festival. The Tri Kappa Candlelight Tour of Spring Mill Village takes place on the third Saturday in September. It's a wonderfully casual atmosphere of acoustic music, pioneer craft demonstrations, hot cider, caramel apples, sassafras tea, and of course the featured delicacy of the festival, persimmon pudding.
But in the beginning, I don't remember in the beginning that we even had music only. We did have in the saloon, they had um, Jack Bremen played the piano and Russell Julian, which was our music teacher and his wife, uh, would sing and they had different, that was what it was just in the beginning. I think it just brought people closer together. Jay Ritchie's the one that needs to be complimented on that. He, he worked hard with, with us, getting everything the way we felt that it should be. The candlelight tour came about because Spring Mill State Park Superintendent J. Robert Ritchie was looking for a way to really bring the Pioneer Village to life for visitors. 1966, when J. Ritchie, who is now deceased, was superintendent of Spring Mill State Park, he and his wife called me one evening and asked what I thought about having a candlelight tour in the village. And I said, oh, I thought this would just be great. So I went out to their house at the superintendent's residence and we discussed this. So the first year in 1966 in October, we had a candlelight tour. In 1968, the festival, Persimmon Festival Committee asked if I would coach, uh, be chairman of this and have it in connection with the Persimmon Festival. So I discussed it with my sorority sisters and we decided that this would be a good thing to do. On a good year, you know, there may be as many as 10,000 people out there, and uh, that's quite a lot to go through a state park in a period of four hours. It just has grown. Uh, it's amazing to me that night how many people will show up. I've been the chairperson over the concession stand for several years, and so we go through quite a few persimmon puddings yes, that yes, night. Yes, yes, yes. We are expected as members to make two 9 by 12 pans and there are 38 ladies right now in our organization, so you multiply that, and that's pretty much what we go through. Spring Mill State Park and the history that's out there is very neat, and it's well known across the country. The village itself kind of met its demise when Mitchell came to its heyday. Uh, the railroad kind of skirted Spring Mill and didn't go down through the village, so therefore they weren't able to, to take advantage of the transportation and the, the shipping of the, the goods and stuff out quite as easily as Mitchell did. It's just like stepping back in time. You kind of respect where you came from when you see things like that. It may not have been an easier time of life, but it was a simpler time of life. So. Ladies and gentlemen, these are your 2008 Persimmon Festival Queen contestants. Let's give them a round of applause. 
it's a queen pageant, yes, but I think we do a really good job in just making the girl maybe step out of her comfort zone a little bit and learn to be a little more polished and present herself well. That's what I, our goal is for these girls, is to maybe make them try something different, but to really leave with a sense that they could do an interview for a job or for college and then have that confidence to be able to talk about themselves and that's what we really try to accomplish. So the girls work really hard. And I think what makes our contest different than everybody else's is they don't get an interview with the judges. Um, so they have to do a 90 second speech about themselves, like a commercial. So everything that they would like the judge to know about them and what makes them different, um, they have to say it on a stage in front of people. So that's really a difficult thing to do. And so it's really a fun night for the girls and it is an honor. I mean, it's a big tradition. Mitchell, are you ready? The crown goes to Lisa Fishman! comes out, has a great time, eats a lot of food, it's a lot of fun. Time to interact with each other, get to know new people, and it's just a fun experience. It's my senior year, so it's going to be our last time for the Persimmon Festival as high schoolers. Dimple Green probably knows more about the American Persimmon than anybody. A green Persimmon is puckery. Green Persimmon contains tannic acid, which if you eat enough of them, They'll make you really sick. Uh, ripe persimmon are real sweet. They get ripe about the end of September. A persimmon has the highest amount of sugar content of any fruit except a date. They're really a, a delicate fruit to me. I mean, I think they're, they're delicate from the standpoint of way they taste and also from the standpoint that they don't last very long. If you don't take care of them the next day after you pick them up from under the tree and you leave them sitting out, they start to ferment. Dimple Green has played a big role in helping introduce the persimmon pudding to other regions of the country. Well, it must have been about 1968 when I became the chairman of the pudding contest. And then Jean Hewitt, from the New York Times came here. She's there was their food editor, and she was writing a regional cookbook. And she was going around to all the fall festivals getting recipes for this cookbook. And I was her host while she was here. She had put in her item that anyone that was interested in persimmons, that they should write to me. The newspaper article created such a demand for persimmon pulp that Dimple and her husband Vernon began a business of canning and shipping Dimple's Delight Persimmon Pulp all over the world. We canned persimmons for 32 years, but we quit in 1998. I would say some, some good years, we probably canned 20,000 cans. After they read about me in the newspaper, they would send me recipes, and I've got recipes from everywhere. Thought, well, nobody said I couldn't publish them, so I did. So I put them together, plus some of the winning recipes for the uh, persimmon pudding contest, plus I started the novelty contest. When I was chairman, they had never had anything but just pudding. So I started what we called a novelty contest that people could bring everything but cookies. They couldn't bring cookies. 
but they could bring pies or cakes or breads or whatever they cooked up with persimmons. We have people coming in, entering puddings and novelties, and then we put a number on them, and we put them on the table over there. At 11 o'clock, we will lock the door, and there will be no other entries. The two ladies at the table will leave. They will go home, and at 5 after 11, the judges will come in. The people entering the persimmon pudding will not see the judges, and the judges will not see the people entering. I've entered all the contests since I've been married in 62 and I usually win every year on something. And I won the persimmon pudding contest in 92, first place. And I happened not to be here that year. <laughs> Is that right? The year before last was my first time and I won third. And then I entered last year and won first. And I took a couple, three recipes and combined them and um, used a little bit of a different technique to get rid of the lumps in my pudding. And I usually use uh, fresh pulp and bake it Saturday morning, and it, they liked it, the judges liked it. I don't like to use fresh persimmons. I like to use frozen persimmons because I think it gives it a better taste. It gives it a better a texture. My favorite part of the persimmon festival is the pudding. I mean, I absolutely, and I never used to like it. I love persimmon pudding, and um, my, I grew up, my aunt was, um, uh, Lois Kirkman, so her husband was the minister at the Baptist Church here, and my whole family likes the edge of the pudding. So she would make her persimmon pudding in muffin cups, muffin tins, so everybody had an edge piece. <laughs> I love it. My mom makes it, still makes it for me every year. Uh, my wife makes it now, my daughter's making it, so it's, it's just a tradition in my family that we eat it. Yeah, that's my daughter just turning one in now. Yeah. This is her very first one. It's something that my grandparents have always done. My grandmothers have, on both sides of the family have always done it. And so I decided that I should take their recipes and re-enter them. Well, this contest is really the signature event of the festival. And that's what's so exciting about it. This is the contest that you want to win. And these women take it seriously. And when they bring their puddings in, in the morning, you know, it looks good. They stay up till two, three in the morning to bake the right pudding. And if it's not up to their specifications, they won't bring it in. This has got a sauce on it. It's not supposed to have a sauce on it. The judges will be told they need to look on consistency of the puddings. Uh, the shape needs to be a four inch square. The coloring needs to be consistent. It needs to be the same color all the way around with, if they can, no tears on the top and with no baking powders or any of the flour showing through, it needs to be uh, appealing. Depending on the kind of persimmons, it'll have different colors. It can be ranged from a very dark, very dark, almost walnut looking color to a very light color. Once you narrow them down by the way they look and the, the consistency and the mixture, then you get to go back and start tasting all of them and, and start picking out the best. And it really, it, the judges always come to a consensus. With this one, you got a crust. There's all kinds of cracks. It's lumpy, a little runny. It doesn't have a good consistency on the side. Uh, probably got baking powder, it's not messed up. And you just couldn't pick something like this over it. See how even, that, that's a nice looking piece of pudding compared to that. <laughs> it's easy to pick out which ones appear good. And then you go with the taste and uh, the taste, compared to the looks, could be very deceiving. For my taste, it's too dry. Okay. When I was in high school, I helped the judges, the, some of the men, and it was utter chaos and fun. I thought it was so much fun to watch these men, and this has been fun, too. I, I, it all, I think we're experienced uh, pudding tasters. Well, to me... Well, it's got a good taste of persimmons. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can taste the persimmons without being overbearing, and the texture. That, that has a lot to do with it. Mm -hmm. It's not real dry, it's not real runny or soupy. It's got a good firm texture. It had a good appearance. Yeah. Good color, just all around. This one's good too though, but it's a little sweet for me. The winner of this year was Eva Powell, and she has won numerous times before. Mm -hmm. <laughs> one year she won maybe uh, back to back, two years in a row, or three times back to back. She's a wonderful cook and a wonderful person.
even in 1953 when the town celebrated its uh, centennial, they had the centennial in August. So they didn't want to come right back and have another big festival just a month and a half later. So they didn't have the festival that year, but they had Persimmon Pudding Day. But this contest has been integral. Uh, they introduced the novelty desserts probably back about 1970. Up until that point, it had just been the persimmon. But uh, there are people that are getting creative with the persimmon and using it in various things. If you look at this table, you'll see ice creams, you'll see rolls, you'll see cheesecakes, just about anything. There's even um, some sort of taco dip made with a, a persimmon in it. So. Uh, People get pretty creative with using the persimmons in various things. Well, they said the most important thing is that it really have a persimmon flavor and that it be something that we would serve to our family or to company, that it be visually appealing. But the main thing is the, that you can really taste a good persimmon flavor. They're all very different. Some have lots of persimmon flavor and some don't. Some you can't even taste the persimmons at all. Definitely interesting. Didn't know that there was uh, so many ways to use persimmons. <laughs> it's been fun. I've, there are a lot of really creative ideas. Lots of ways that people are, you know, thinking outside the box with the persimmons. <laughs> this one was first. This one was first place. Well, we think it's got, per, it's got Cool Whip in it. Um, it's got a layer of your persimmon in there. And the crust is kind of a flat. Or something yeah. in the crust. Kind it's very good. Shortbread kind of crust. This is the big day. It's, it started early. We had to we had to be at breakfast at six o'clock this morning to kind of go over all of our things for the day, and then we did the 5K run this morning. It was just a fantastic crowd, one of the record crowds I've ever had for it. They're doing an antique car and tractor show out there right now, and at one o'clock we'll post the colors for the parade, and we'll have some pre-parade introductions and. People come from all over for the parade here. At one point, we were the second largest parade in the state. It's, you know, second only to the 500 Festival Parade. So we're working on getting back to that point. We come up through part of the parade route a while ago, and uh, it's full of chairs. People mark their spot for the parade the day before. That's how exciting it is to be there and get the good seats. Everybody has their own corner. Everybody has their own niche. Everybody has their own space. And Nobody ever moves anybody's chair because yeah. that would be sacrilegious to do that. It's territorial. I mean, you stake your claim and you go sit with the same people every year and the whole town's a family at that point. Welcome to the 62nd annual Mitchell Persimmon Festival Parade, celebrating Mitchell's hometown heroes. I'm Johnny Henderson. We're glad to have you along this afternoon as the City of Mitchell police cars make their way for the opening of today's parade. While Mitchell's hometown heroes represent our soldiers, sailors, and such, we also should remember our hometown heroes include our police, fire, and other civil servants, and we appreciate their duties just as much. Ladies and gentlemen, and representing our Grand Marshal Ron Allen Jr., his mother Jill and her sons, a graduate of Mitchell High School who passed away after injuries while serving our country. I think the people all participate to cheer in the community and it's really important. A lot of people turn out. There hasn't been as many as 40, 50,000 people here to watch this parade. The parade chairman job is the toughest in the festival. It all culminates in one day. You don't get to spread your responsibility out over the full week. You're either ready to go or you're not. It's a year-long process. Uh, you're constantly looking for new things to potentially bring to the parade. Uh, you have to spend a certain amount of time educating new folks in what we do here, how long we've been here, how special this is, and make them have a pride in it also. This year, Lisa Bushman, a 16-year-old foreign exchange student at Mitchell High School, Wednesday evening was named the Mitchell Persimmon Festival Queen. This year's Miss Congeniality is Suzanne Berger, also one of six princesses. Also Elizabeth Patton, Amanda Brinkman, Montana Lucas, Autumn Paget, and Caitlin Jeffries. These are the Mitchell Persimmon Festival Queen and her court. Congratulations, ladies. Coming up are several antique farm machinery tractors and such. It's always been a great parade and uh, you know, you can two hours of seeing things from all over southern Indiana and even some from the surrounding states. This is the 1936 unstyled B John Deere. 1948 WC Alice Chandler's. Representing District 7 of the American Legion, the American Legion Riders. Old-fashioned furnishings, but young-fashioned riders. 
in a 1952 Korean War M38 Army Jeep. Since people get to see old cars and old tractors and all that good stuff, and where you don't get to see them every day, so it's a good plus for Mitchell. Been here a long time, so it must be pretty good. This entry from Leslie Goldsby is a 1959 Dodge two-door hardtop. And those ladies have been in my closet and stole my poodle skirt. I've had this car probably 15, 20 years, and I've had it kind of redone. And uh, it's original colors, original upholstery in it, motor and everything like that. So I bought it. I had it painted and everything redone on it. And it's up pretty good shape right now. Well, it's a 1935 Plymouth Deluxe Coupe. I bought this in 1958 uh, when I was senior in high school for $50. This is the first car I ever owned and got it restored almost about a year ago exactly. This 1927 Ford Bucking Model T was bought from the George Watterson estate by Jeff Martin in November of 07. This car had run in the Pekin Fourth of July parade from the late 50s through the late 80s and now makes its appearance in the Mitchell Persimmon Festival. Welcome Jeff Martin and a 27 Ford Buck and T. We work very hard to bring the top notch things in here that we can uh, and sometimes we do a better job than others but it's it's pretty much a full year process. I mean we've already got some possibilities on, on the rolls for next year that we'd like to have and try to find out what their requirements are for coming and uh, hopefully we can get some things that and they go down the streets, some local folks can go, wow, that's, that's pretty, pretty neat. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, from Chicago, make welcome the South Shore Drill Team. The South Shore Drill Team uh, had performed uh, in various parades around the country, and our festival committee had taken notice of them over the years, and it inquired as whether they would be available to come to Mitchell and what their requirements would be for coming. I think this, this was the fourth or fifth time they'd been here. Now they contact us every year to see if we would like for them to come. So it's become a regular stop on their circuit too. We're glad to have them every year and they're, they're well received here and uh, we hope they continue to come. Let's make our visitors from Chi-Town very welcome the South Shore Drill Team, ladies and gentlemen. Well, I would like to think that the future of the festival is, is hugely bright, but obviously it's it's a generational thing. You know, we pass the torch and you need folks to come along and, you know, like every small town, we don't have as many business folks and things like that, but I still think we have a good nucleus of people that uh, their pride won't let this decline. People want to do this, and that says a lot on how important this is to Mitchell, you know, that you don't you don't have trouble finding volunteers. You know, this whole thing is put on with volunteers. People realize that and they, they use that as a way to kind of get to know everybody and make this community part of their, you know, be a part of it and part of their lives. You have such a multi-generational family atmosphere here that that is so important to the festival. Even in the pudding contest, you see the grandmother, her daughter, and her granddaughters each bringing in their puddings. You see at the Phi Bake tent, you see mom working with her daughters. I love it. I love the food stand, and I love the sorority, and I love the festival. And it's not just dad that's done all the work. We've all worked as a family, and it's been time that we've been able to spend as a family that a lot of people don't get to do. And when you look back at the, the former chairman of the festival and former queens, that's who Mitchell is. That's, you know, you recognize the names because their families are still here and they're still active in the community. And so just being a part of that makes you really a part of the community.
We just invite people to come out. Come check us out. We're a small town, you know, a town of 5,000, and we just hope that it always continues. It's something that people have, well, they just look forward to it every year. I probably haven't missed three nights of the festival in the last 25 years. I hope I don't miss three nights in the next 25 years.